Hello, my name is Steve from Vosprung Suspension, and I'm here today to show you how to install the lift cap on the air shaft of your Fox Evol fork. So that will be either a 34 Evol uh, 2018 and onwards, or a 36 Evol 2018 onwards. Uh, these are model year 2018. These forks were released uh, halfway through 2017. So your stock air shaft will look something like this. This is the 2019 update to the 36 uh, air shaft, the previous generation. Uh, the original 36 air shafts look like this. Then they have a very small top out bumper. This is obviously a non-stock piston. They had this uh, top out assembly. It's been updated to this. Highly recommend that uh, before you install a lift cap on anything with the top out assembly looking like this, get one of these 2019 updates. The part numbers are in the description beneath this video. Uh, the reason for this is that these have a much bigger top out bumper, uh, which is necessary on these particular air shafts, and that prevents some of the top out knocking that people have experienced with this style. Uh, if you have top out issues with your 36, the lift cap will not solve it on its own, uh, in which case you do need to update to the new air shaft. Depending on where you are in the world, it will be available either directly from Fox if you're in the US or from the Fox distributor in your country. These are quite simple uh, to install the lift cap on and we're gonna go over that very briefly. Uh, recommend that you use this tool here, which is our uh, roll pin removal tool to get the piston off. So I'll assume that you have read the manufacturer's instructions, again, linked beneath this video, and you have gotten to the stage where you have the air shaft removed from the fork. So the only difference between the processes for the 34 and the 36 fork is for the 34 fork, we are going to remove the top out assembly. So this top hat here and this bumper. For the 36, we're going to leave it in place. On the 34, this will be black. Uh, on the 36 for the 2019 update, this is silver. The reason that we have to leave it in place on the 36 uh, is because of this hole here. If we remove it, then uh, things won't work. On the 34, however, the gap between the piston and the seal head is such that it will work as a pneumatic top out bumper. You'll end up with the same amount of travel that you had before, uh, except it will be topping out on air rather than on a bumper. There is quite a lot of space uh, between the piston and the seal head on the 34, and as a result, you don't get any issues with top out knocking like this generation of 36 had. So let's get into it. So what we're looking to do here is remove this roll pin. Uh, you'll notice that it's sticking out slightly from one side. Uh, tool to do it with is this roll pin tool. Now I know some of you people will try this at home without using the correct tool. Um, please be aware that if you do this, you're doing it at your own risk. So the roll pin tool, you'll notice, is asymmetrical here. So this side is thinner than this side. The bolt is not going through the center. So we want to use the thinner side, as you can see here, facing up towards the piston. That's just for clearance so we can get the bolt close enough into that hole there. So what we want to do is gently tighten that up. Make sure that it's lined up properly. So obviously once it's lined up, this uh, roll pin will be in the center here. And you'll kind of feel it key into place. Once you have that just done up finger tight like that, you can see this can rattle around slightly, but the bolt is basically keyed into the, uh, the roll pin. Make sure it's lined up. Place the tool gently in the vise like so. And then using your four millimeter Allen key, simply wind it out. Now, putting the tool in the vise serves two purposes. It stops you dropping the thing by accident. It also stops the tool from being able to be forced out around the piston. So wind this all the way in until the screw hits the stop. If you feel excessive resistance, you probably don't have the bolt lined up with the roll pin and you're pressing directly into the side of the piston. So once, once this reaches here, we can simply undo this and then this slides out.
we won't need uh, this roll pin or the tool or the piston again. So that can be put aside. So what we have here left on this 36 shaft is the shaft, the foot stud, seal head, uh, the top out bumper and the top out hat. On the 36, we're leaving these in place. If your fork is a 34, take this off and remove this bumper here. Because this is a 36, we're gonna do it correctly. Leave that in place. So the next step is to install this piston stud here onto the, uh, onto the shaft. So we're going to line up the lower hole uh, of this shaft, of this stud with the hole on the shaft. So we want to line up the lower hole here next to this flange with the hole on the shaft. Once we do that, we need to get this little roll pin in there. So these roll pins, spring pins as some people call them, uh, need to be squeezed in order to get them into the hole. Now you can do that either in a vise, uh, which is usually the easiest way to get it started, uh, or you can use Nipex or multi-grips. So in this case, squeezing that, the Nipex, just need to get it started in there. So we have the roll pin there. The holes are lined up, as you can see there. Now, just simply gonna very carefully push this into place in the vise. So you can see this is pushing through. We wanna make sure that it's fully seated. It doesn't necessarily need to be centered, but it does need to be through both sides of the stud, like so. So once, once we reach this point, the next step is to put the plastic piston onto the stud. You'll notice the plastic piston has slots machined in it, it has a quad ring on it, and an O-ring. So these slots in the piston will line up with the roll pin and that prevents the piston from rotating. Not that it matters if the piston does rotate. Make sure that this O-ring here is greased, this small one here. So before we put the top cap on, we need some blue Loctite on this thread here. So we are using blue Loctite 243, just a small dab here. Then we're going to grab piston dome here need a small amount of slick honey around the inside here. So a small amount of slick honey around the inside here, just to lubricate it with the seals. And then we need to thread this on. Please don't touch the grease to the Loctite. Once we have that threaded on by hand, we now need to torque it to 50 inch pounds, which is 5.5 newton meters. So you have several options for how you want to hold the shaft in order to torque it. Uh, you can hold it in shaft clamps or you can clamp this end here. I'm going to assume that most of you do not have 10 millimeter shaft clamps, so I'm going to clamp against this end here. Put this in the vise. Torque wrench set to 50 inch pounds, 5.5 newton meters. We are going to tighten this and Brace this so we're not bending it. Tighten this until it clicks. This shaft is now assembled and ready to go back in the fork once it's lubricated. To lubricate it, we're going to use a generous, generous amount of slick honey on the piston. You can coat the entire piston head including the metal dome with slick honey. Now the metal dome will never touch the walls of the stanchion, but having the slick honey on it means that it will push that grease up ahead of itself through the stanchion and lubricate everything nicely. So this one here is complete and ready to install in the fork. If you install the piston all the way into the stanchion with the seal head a long way back, what can happen is that the volume of air trapped in the negative chamber here is large enough that it builds so much pressure that when you pressurize it in the positive chamber here, it can't overcome that fully and it can't reach the equalization point 
and therefore it doesn't fully extend. This will cause it to suck down into its travel. Uh, if this is the case, then you'll need to disassemble it um, and reinstall the air shaft with the seal head close to the bar. From this point forth, I'll refer you back to the manufacturer's instructions uh, and specifications for the installation of the air shaft into the bottom of your stanchion and the reassembly of the rest of your fork. For pressurization and equalization, uh, it's exactly the same as before. Start with the same pressure that you had before. Start with one less token if you had any in there and pump it up to your desired pressure. You'll feel it very firm initially. Uh, once you compress it a few millimeters, you'll feel it equalize. And from that point forth, you're ready to go right. Enjoy your lift cap. If you have any questions or issues, please contact us and we'll help you out in any way that we can.